Um, I also worry about like this idea that, you know, we didn't evolve next to a patch of cauliflower that's just there all year. We can, we, we would come across some plants and, uh, we'd eat them and then we wouldn't eat them maybe for another year or two because you just wouldn't come across them. So that hunter gatherer pattern, uh, lends very well to rot like seasonal eating and rotational eating and really a variety of plants. Um, so I think like there's different strategies one can think about when consuming plants to like do it in a very healthy way. But I think when you're buying the same bag of greens from the same supplier, you're setting yourself up to be overwhelmed with whatever potential toxin is there. And also mm -hmm. whatever part of that plant is trying to not be eaten. So there's this idea that a plant doesn't really want to be eaten by you. Um, it definitely doesn't want to be digested, right? Cause a lot of the plants, especially fruits, um, you know, th they're trying to get, get into your body and then that seed doesn't want to be digested cause it wants to poop out and grow another yeah, plant. I've heard this with a, lo Seeds a couple different types of nuts. greens specifically yeah, yeah. that a lot of greens are actually really hard to digest. I don't know. It's the specific kind. Just, just greens in general. We're not, we're, we're, our guts are not built to digest a ton of plant food. It's why so many people are bloated all the time. Um, this idea that you need tons and tons of fiber was an observational study, like observational concept from a very long time ago. It was adopted cause it just sounds good. Um, and, and it, it really doesn't hold water. Like having a ton of fiber doesn't prevent colon cancer. It doesn't do a lot when you, uh, you know, the only evidence that exists to suggest it might be good for you is epidemiological evidence, which isn't good research. It's just mm -hmm. not, it's a questionnaire. It's, it's a, it's so we, we, we talked about that on the previous podcast, like epidemiolog epidemiological evidence should be a question and, and further questions and should never really be considered like something to follow. Um, so yeah, I think plants, uh, plants, when they're cooked, you release the nutrients. So, so they become more digestible. So I always bring up this like example of spinach. Yes, it has iron. If you eat a bag of spinach, you will be horribly bloated mm -hmm. and you will not absorb much of the iron because you cannot digest it and you will end up pooping out a lot of that spinach. Um, if you boil pound of spinach down to this mushy goo, uh, then you can extract a lot more of that iron. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't when cook you, out when you boil it? No. Like if you overboil it into what, nothing, but I'm saying like, um, when you cook plants, it, it makes them more digestible and it makes their mm. nutrients more available. This is true with, uh, c uh with, uh, fermentation as well. So, um, we're not great at processing plant food. So we evolved because we have these big, beautiful brains to process using nature. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about processed food, we mean industrial processing. We mean high pressure, high, uh, potentially chem addition of chemicals, high pressure, high heat to like modify things. But, um, when we're cooking them or we're fermenting them, uh, those are actual natural processes. We evolved with fire. We evolved with fermentation and, and that's how you unlock nutrients. So fermented plants, I encourage people to eat regularly and fermented plants is, is something that should be part of your daily diet. Mm. And it's not part of an American diet, but it's part of many other diet. Like you can think Korean, uh, I'm Russian. Kim, it's kimchi. A, kimchi is like a very, very good for your gut. Uh -huh. It produce, it helps uh, deliver healthy microbiome, uh, healthy bacteria that help your gut microbiome. So I think that it's not about plants are bad and meat is good. It's about understanding our food history and understanding like our evolution, understanding our guts, our gut microbiome, understanding that what has been sold to you for the last hundred years is not healthy. That's yeah. why we are more metabolically damaged and we have more chronic medical disease. I'm that's, I'm not saying anything uh, controversial no, here, even though, uh, facts, even There's though it's like, factual. but it is controversial. People will say, yeah. Oh my God, no, the spinach is so good for me. Like, no, it's not like yeah. it's, it's okay in moderation. <laughs> and, and that's what we used to talk about with meat. And I'm like, you're made of meat. When you could consume a piece of red meat, it has everything you need for the most part, not everything, but it's a very, very complete meal. And it feeds you the kinds of proteins, the absorbable proteins, the kinds of fats, the quality of the fat, to really make you thrive. Um, and, and I think that's the concept I try to like educate everyone on is that it's not about taking a position of I'm a carnivore or I'm a vegan or this or that. It's about understanding food because it's, it's so like, it's part of how you feel every day. It's part of your culture. It's yeah. so ingrained in us and getting all emotional about it and being like, Oh, this is what I eat. Cause I'm Italian or this is what I eat. Like, no, you, 
learn. We're moving forward. We're evolving. We're going to be in a virtual world soon. Let's yeah. let, let let's like use uh, the information we have to make more thoughtful understanding. So I, I think that, yeah, there's a lot to be said about specific plants that you should be cautious about. Um, you know, nightshade vegetables are an issue for some people, but yeah. really like just eating a bunch of potatoes is a real issue for some people. Cause you, it's not good for you. Like if you're if in a time where there wasn't any food and you couldn't, you couldn't find animals like, yeah, you can survive on potatoes. But in this world, like we need to think about thriving. We need to think about what, how we evolved and we evolved eating animal foods, mm -hmm. thriving on animal foods. And as soon as we introduced grains and agriculture, we we got sicker yeah and and that that is just a history lesson that needs to be embraced by everyone and, and start thinking about that so instead of you know trying to get a fake chicken nugget maybe make your own chicken nugget with a pasture raised chicken yeah it costs more money because you because it costs more money to raise a pasture raised chicken and it takes more time to make the chicken nugget Mm -hmm. He's got to make it because they're not making healthy pasture raised chicken nuggets. Right. They're making weird <laughs> chemical slop chicken yeah. nuggets. Yeah. Have you ever seen a chicken nugget be made? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For so McDonald's. Gross, I've seen dude. the slime oh, that pours out. It's like, yeah. a, it's like a pink paste. Yeah. It's like the nastiest Ugh. mixture of like ground up innards and nasty stuff. <laughs> oh, man. And then I, they bread it. And then yeah, they fry the, it in vegetable the bread oil. Is like Ugh. not even bread. It's like all this other stuff that they Ugh. put on it to make it last. There's a video going around right now of this woman who found a bag of McDonald's that was in her house for 27 years. It was fresh. And the or fries look fresh. fresh. Yeah. yeah, the fries look legit. It, they look like you could eat them now. Because bacteria aren't trying to eat that nasty stuff.